one of Tennessee's best agricultural secrets, hemp. And today we're in Springfield talking with Bill Corbin, who grows loads of hemp. Bill, glad to meet you. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. T tell us what got you started in this unique product. Four years ago when they started the pilot program, I, I wanted to be involved early on. I was looking for alternative cropping. Uh, the margins in traditional agriculture, whether that be typical grain varieties for this area, tobacco, cattle, the margins are so narrow. I, I think the agricultural community needs to evolve, look for uh, other avenues to try to concentrate more profits with fewer acres. So Bill, tell us about the type of hemp that you grow. There are three different uh, varieties in this field. This, for instance, is a variety called cherry tang. And these varieties all are specific for extraction. The CBD values are uh, exceptionally high in some of these. They don't have the growth structure to satisfy the fiber industry. So this is specifically for extraction. So, and when you say extraction, you're talking about the oil that's contained within the flower of the plant? I am, yes. Okay, so, so what you want it to do, it's got obviously lots of of buds here. So is this the beginning of a bud? It is, it's starting to develop. A lot of this, uh, a lot of this fan leaf as it matures and, and loads flower, this will become a lot larger, a, a much, much more dense uh, and, and exceptionally heavy. A lot of this fan leaf material, it's called cleaning. A lot of this will, uh, will dry up and, uh, and, and waste away, uh, removing a lot of the I guess you'd say extra biomass, where you're left with uh, more of a concentration of, uh, of your bud material. So this plant blooms all the way up the stem, not just on the tip here. It, does. it blooms all over the plant. It does, quite, you know, quite a distance down. Of course, you have, uh, you have horizontal growth from that where you're building flower also. We work specifically with clones, and it is by far the most expensive route you can take in trying to produce a field, but we have to make sure that the consistency of the whole field is as close to identical, identical as possible. Only way we can do that is from cloning. Anything from seed, the genetics are not stable. There are so many anomalies and variations that can happen, and where you have tests on a seed type that shows a very, very good profile as far as CBD value and your Delta 9 value of the, the THC composite, there might be plants that deviate from that norm. Right. And if when testing, if the state comes in and they test that, that crop is going to be destroyed. So to guard against that and have a very, very consistent marketable flower, um, we work uh, through the, the we work through cloning only. So tell me when you harvest this because I, I'm seeing a plant with all different stages of flower development. How do you harvest it? What we'll do is we'll come in here uh, a, a lot like tobacco, and we'll take shears uh, and we'll cut this entire plant now depending on how big this is at the time, it could be that we're gonna to have to section this right. to handle instead of being able to take care of the entire plant at one time. And we spike it on tobacco sticks and uh, air dry it. We're putting frames in the greenhouses. We'll house in there where every barn that we're taking down and stripping out tobacco, every one of those barns will be double crop refilled with hemp. We're right on the uh, verge of building a very large structure over here specifically for hemp. Drying and having the capacity, the room, this occupies, it, it, it needs so much more room because of, obviously you can see how bulky this is to properly, properly dry it and not have the mold issues that can mm -hmm. go along with it. It requires an incredible amount of space. What are some of your challenges in growing hemp? weed infestation and insect damage. There are no chemical remedies, uh, either pre or post emergence that are labeled for this. There are some bacterial teas and things that we can grow ourselves and then have applied. Uh, that gets into a whole different, uh, a whole different area that uh, uh, a lot of larger growers are gonna have to address this next year. 
some corn borer worms uh, in this crop. There's not a thing we can do about it except try to weather the storm, uh, but th that can be devastating as far as damage goes. This variety works incredibly well in New York State. Another variety over here, a variety called Randy, uh, will do exceptionally well in New York State. Late Sioux, which by far is our bread and butter, does not. It has to stay in the field so, so long. Their growing season is too short. So some of the things that we're doing, and uh, I had three other varieties I'm going to submit to TDA for approval, will be hopefully this next year uh, trialed on, smaller, uh, on a smaller scale to see what reacts better in these growing conditions because all these genetics are coming from the breeder that's part of our group in Colorado. So is Tennessee a good place to grow hemp? Tennessee is an excellent place to grow hemp. We have a, you know, we have a, a very good long growing season. Our soils are, uh, are, are good. We generally have, unlike most places, uh, have enough natural rainfall where irrigation is not uh, is not not a necessity. We have a lot of growers that have the infrastructure that you need uh, because we are spe especially in the Middle Tennessee area, South Central Kentucky, uh, Western Kentucky, um, a tobacco-based economy, so to speak, um, and that means that uh, we have the right infrastructure, the right equipment, uh, uh, a ready labor force. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent place to grow hemp. The profitability of this crop is better than tobacco. I think uh, people are gonna recognize that. As far as production goes, we're gonna have to as a state, and Kentucky is, uh, Kentucky is uh, moving faster than we are. They've had some really, really good support uh, from the state government. Um, they're, we, just like Kentucky, have to have more of a whole plant mentality, uh, looking at trying to find varieties that will fit uh, more parts of the, of, of the emerging market uh, than just chasing, chasing CBD. So you're in good shape, Bill. Let's go see what's made from hemp. So we've learned all about the flower that Bill grows for his hemp, but there's also producers that grow hemp for a variety of other reasons. And I'm here with Paige with the Hemp Association to show us how hemp is used in a lot of different products that we use every day. Paige, tell us about hemp. Let's start here with this massive fiber that we've got here. Okay, so this is some fiber that's typically used for industrial purposes. Um, this is some hemp building material, formerly known as hempcrete or cellulosic insulation. It's really great for eco and environmentally friendly buildings. Um, here's just some raw hemp seed um, with the hull still intact. This is hemp seed cake, so this is what is left whenever you press the seeds and is used for animal feed. Great. This right here is more of a textile grade um, hemp where it's a little softer, a little bit greener. Um, younger so it, it doesn't have as much lignin content. Um, it creates really great soft um, wearable fibers. Yes this feels so soft and obviously you can use it in a lot of different different forms so that that's nice that it's just so durable. Yeah it's being blended with silk and denim as you can see so it's very versatile. Um, and then we have some hemp 3D filament. So this is for 3D printing. Um, and here are some 3D printed items. Here is a hemp plastic cup. So this is a biocomposite that's made with hemp. Of course, we have hemp string. Because so that's what is... we normally think about with hemp is rope and string and yeah. that type thing. Yes. So, uh, and then talk to us about the consumer products because this is where I think it's interesting. T tell us about these products here. Yeah, so these are primarily made with the hemp seed. These are uh, de-hulled hemp seeds, um, often called hemp hearts. And you can also make hemp protein, um, which is prim primarily the whole of the hemp plant. Um, it has a good source of fiber, great source of protein, bioavailable, all of your 20 amino acids. Um, the hemp hearts themselves have a perfect ratio of omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. Um, so they're a great fish oil uh, supplement replacement. And, and even in beverages, so we've got yeah. coffee, soda, even milk. 
Yep, so they're um, using hemp to press milk with. Um, you can even find hemp ice cream, hemp yogurt. Um, the sodas are really great and they're enriched with cannabinoids, which are from the flour. Um, but just an excellent source of nutrition um, from the hemp seed. And then obviously we've got beauty products as well. So yeah. soaps and creams. And what, what part of the hemp plant is used in these? Yeah, so the soaps um, are primarily made with the hemp seed oil. Um, so they provide a really nourishing benefits as far as extra moisturizing power. The creams um, and the tinctures um, down here are typically all made from the flower extracts. So you can find full spectrum extracts or just isolate extracts. The isolate is just gonna be your CBD or cannabidiol. Um, and all of these products right here are actually produced right here in Tennessee too. That's fantastic. So obviously uh, we've learned a lot about hemp today and we realize that hemp is really hip. So Tennessee is on the cutting edge for hemp production. And Paige, thanks for being with us. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.